this is the tale of Catskin. Let us be off. Away we go. There was once a great and powerful king who wished only to pass his kingdom on to a son after he died. He was therefore quite displeased when his wife gave birth to a baby girl. What use have I for a daughter? The king grumbled. Now the queen had died in childbirth. So the king gave his baby daughter to the castle nursemaids to be raised in a lonely tower. He scarcely saw her at all as she was growing up. And when she was a young woman, he said to all his counselors, Marry her off to the first suitor that comes along. What care I? Now, the first suitor that came along was an ugly old lord. And when he saw the princess, he grinned wickedly, revealing one single tooth. The princess did not wish to marry such a vile creature. So she ran down to the castle henhouse and asked the old henwife what she might do. So you don't wish to marry the old lord, do you? said the henwife. In that case, go and ask your father, the king, to give you a dress as warm and golden as the sun. Well, the princess did not think her father would be able to do this. So she went to him and said, Father, before I marry, I must have a dress as warm and golden as the sun. The king nodded his head and said simply, it shall be done. Now the king commanded that all the most skilled weavers in all the land be brought together. It took the weavers many days, but at last they were finished. They presented the king with a dress that was indeed as warm and golden as the sun itself. Now, the king presented this dress to his daughter, the princess frowned. She took it and said, Thank you, father. But she went at once back to the henwife and told her what had happened. Ah, in that case, said the henwife, ask him for a dress as bright and silver as the moon. Well, the princess went straight back to her father and said, Father, before I marry, I must have a dress as bright and silver as the moon. The king nodded and said, it shall be done. He commanded that all the weavers be brought back together. And the weavers worked without stopping for weeks and weeks. At last, the dress was finished and it was indeed a dress as bright and silver as the moon. They gave it to the king, and the king presented it to his daughter. The princess took the dress and said, thank you, father. But she went right back to the henwife and asked what she should do next. This time, said the henwife, ask him to give you a dress as sparkling and gleaming as the stars. The princess did not think her father would be able to do this. So back she went and said, Father, before I marry, I must have a dress as sparkling and gleaming as the stars. The king simply nodded his head and said, It shall be done. He commanded that all the weavers be brought back together. The weavers worked and worked and worked. This time it took them months. But at long, long last, they were finished. And they gave the king a dress as sparkling and as gleaming as the stars themselves. Now when the king gave the dress to his daughter, she took it and said simply, Thank you, father, but went back to the henwife and said, I asked him for the dress like the sun. 
I asked him for a dress like the moon. I asked him for a dress like the stars, and he has given me all of these things. Well, the henwife frowned. This time, my dear, listen closely. You must ask your father for a gown all made of cat skin. When he has given it to you, take your other three dresses and put on the cat skin gown and flee. The princess did exactly as she was told. She asked her father for the cat skin gown. And when he had presented it to her, she wrapped the first three dresses up just as tightly as they would go and tucked each one into a pocket of the cat skin gown. Then she wrapped herself in the catskins and stole out of the castle at midnight. Off she went into the dark forest. She walked and walked and walked, hearing the wind rustling in the trees, nearly tripping over gnarled roots. She had never walked so far before in her life, but even though her feet and her legs had begun to ache, on she went. On and on and on, for days and nights. Why, she lost track of how long she had been walking. She walked and walked so long that she wore holes in both of her shoes. But... Finally, she came to the edge of the forest. There, before her, was a grand house where a noblewoman lived with her son, a fine lord. Now, the princess went right up to the door and knocked on it. The door was opened by a servant who said, Yes, what are you doing there, wrapped up all in your cat skins? Please, Oh, please, sir, she said. Take me in. Give me a bit to eat and a place to stay. You can earn your keep in the kitchens, said the servant. And he brought her straight down to the scullery, where the cook had her sweep the floors and wash the dishes and scrub out all the pots. Now, no one there knew her name, but since... She spent each day wrapped up in her catskin gown. Everyone called her Catskin. Now, one day, news was given out that the young lord of the house was to have a ball. All the fine noblemen from all the lands around would be invited, and there would be feasting and dancing, and great revelry all night long. The princess went to the cook and begged leave to go. How I wish that I could see what goes on at a ball such as that, she said. You go to the ball? Why, you impudent wench, said the cook. And he took a basin of water that was nearby and threw it in her face. Well... This did not please the princess, as well you can imagine. Late at night, when no one was watching, she crept out of the kitchen and out of the house. She disrobed and bathed herself in a crystal waterfall, and then she put on the gown that was golden like the sun. She went back to the house, and in she went into the grand ballroom. All who saw her were quite taken with her beauty and her finery. The young lord wished to dance with her. They danced and danced and danced. Good lady, he said. Might I know your name? But she would not tell him. Where do you come from? He asked her. And in reply, she said only, Dear sir, if it's the truth I must tell, then it's in Waterthrow, 
I dwell. Now, after all the dancing was done, the princess slipped out and was gone before anyone had noticed. She went back to the place where she had hidden her catskin gown. She took off the golden dress and wrapped herself back up in her catskins. And she went into the kitchens once more with no one the wiser. Now the next day, the young lord asked his mother whether he might have another ball in hopes that the fine lady would come again. And she consented. When news reached the kitchens, the princess asked the cook whether she might go to this ball as well. Oh, please, she said. I'll only be gone for just a few minutes. You go to a ball? Why, you ridiculous girl, said the cook. And the cook took a ladle out of the soup pot and struck her across the shoulders. Well, this did not please the princess. That evening, when no one was watching, she crept out of the kitchen. Back, back, back she went to the same place as she had been the previous day. She hid her cat skins and bathed herself in the crystal waterfall. Then she put on the dress that was silver like the moon. She went back to the great house, and in she went to the ballroom, where she danced again with the young lord of the house. They were together all evening. He was quite taken with her, and truth be told, she was with him. He asked her once more where she had come from. Good sir, if it's the truth I must tell, it's in ladle strike I dwell. That was all the princess would say. Now the young lord did not know what she meant, but he did not ask her any more. After quite some time, she slipped out with no one the wiser, went back, put on her cat skins, and to the kitchen she returned. Now the next day, the young lord asked his mother whether he might have one last ball, and she agreed. When news that there would be a third ball reached the kitchens, the princess went back to the cook and asked if she might go to this one. If it please you, she said, I promise that I'll only be gone a few minutes. I'll just peep in, and no one will see me or even know I'm nearby. You go to the ball? What is wrong with you, said the cook. And the cook took a soup skimmer and cracked it across her head. Well, this did not please the princess one bit. When no one was watching, she went quietly out of the kitchens and back to her secret place where she hid her cat skins and bathed herself in the crystal waterfall. Then she put on the dress that was as gleaming as the stars. Into the grand house and into the grand ballroom she strode, more beautiful than ever. All the noblemen and noblewomen gasped to see how elegantly and gracefully she moved. She and the young lord danced together all evening. Please, he said, please tell me where you live, that I might visit you one day. But all she would say was, kind sir, if it's the truth I must tell, it's in skimmer crack I dwell the young lord could not figure out what she might mean. But this night, when she left, the young lord saw her and followed. 
he saw her go back to her secret place and put on her cat skins, and he recognized her at once as the new scullery maid. Well, he went back home and asked his mother, the lady of the house, if he might have leave to marry whoever she wished. Why, my son, said the great lady, marry whoever pleases you, as long as she is an eligible young maiden. Well then, mother, he said, I wish to marry Catskin. Catskin? You mean the girl who works in the kitchens? Never, said his mother. When the prince heard this news, he took to his bed. He lay there and would not arise. He developed a terrible fever, which burned at him and made him ache and tremble. His mother did not know what to do, so she called for a great doctor. The doctor came and examined the young lord. Well, he said, it seems that the young lord is quite in love. Hmm, said his mother. Mother, begged the young lord in a sickly voice, might I have some soup? An excellent idea said his mother. I'll have the cook make some soup. No, said the young lord. I'll only have soup that's made by cat skin. His mother frowned, but she knew that she must help her son heal. So she sent word to the kitchens that cat skin herself must make soup for the young lord. The cook was shocked to hear this, but had cat skin begin. Now, Catskin, the princess, knew a fine recipe for soup that she had learned from her nursemaids. So, she cut up the vegetables and popped them into the water with salt, pepper, and some fine herbs and spices. She stirred and stirred and stirred as the soup bubbled and simmered. When it was ready, she poured the soup into a bowl, and she carried that bowl carefully up to the young lord. Now, when he saw her, he smiled and sat up in his bed. He took the soup and sipped it from a spoon. <sighs> it's the greatest soup I've ever tasted, he said. Thank you, Catskin. Now the young lord's mother stood frowning by the bedside. So, she said, you can make a good soup. But know this, my son wishes to marry you. Tell me, are you an eligible maiden? The princess only smiled and left the room without a word. She went back as quickly as she could to her secret place. She bathed herself one last time in the crystal waterfall, and she put the dress like the stars back on. She returned to the house and went into the room of the young lord. He and his mother gasped with astonishment at the bright light that suddenly filled the room when the princess entered. The grand lady said, So, the wedding may proceed whenever you wish. When the young lord heard this, he bounded from his bed in excitement. He hugged the princess, and she hugged him, and they kissed each other. They were married with great pomp and state. After a time, they had a son together. All the halls of the grand house rang out with the little boy's laughter. One day, an old beggar woman came to the house, and the princess gave her son a few coins to bring. Now, after he had given the coins to the beggar woman, the cook, who was watching, muttered, Ah, see 
how like takes to like. For it had never sat well with the cook that the kitchen maid had gotten to marry the young lord. When the princess heard this, she frowned. No one knows that I am a princess, she said. They still talk about me behind my back as if I'm nothing more than a kitchen maid. Well, this would not do. She went to her husband and said, make ready our carriage. It's time we paid a visit to my father. So she and he and their young son got into their grand carriage and off they went on the path that led through the wood. It took quite some time, but they emerged on the other side of the wood, and there they were before the princess's castle, where her father, the king, was still living. In they went into the king's throne room. The king, in truth, did not recognize his own daughter dressed in such fine clothing. Tell me, O oh great king, she said, is there no one here, no one to keep you company in this old castle? And the king shook his head. I had a daughter once, he said, but I was cruel to her and wicked, and I drove her out of the castle. I did not love her, but if I could only see her again, I would beg her forgiveness and be a better father to her than I ever was before. Then, said the princess with a smile, you have your chance, for father, here I am. The father looked closely at her face. He recognized her by her eyes and by her smile. He began to cry. He fell at her feet and said, Daughter, forgive me, forgive me. Rise, father, she said. I do indeed forgive you. Now, come back with us. Come back to my house and stay with us for a time. The king agreed at once. Together, they all got into the grand carriage and off they rode. And on the way to pass the time, the princess told her father all about her wild adventure as Catskin. <laughs>